Today we've got something new and exciting for you because yesterday I did a Costco run with the intention of making a ton of meals from Costco. I am Sharla and I'm Christy and we're from Freezer Meals 101 and I have a Costco quote. Ooh. Okay. It's from Modern Family and it's Cam and it was in the first season and was when they were first doing the documentary style and they were having interviews and he said, I'm kind of like Costco, I'm big and the more you get to know me, the more you love me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, it was a very Cam thing to say. There was one, there was more to it than that, but it was very funny. Well, I've never watched Modern Family, but... Oh. <laughs> You haven't watched Modern Family? I have never oh, watched Oh, it's Modern so Family. funny. And it's kind of true. Like Costco, uh, okay, we don't love going to Costco because where we live it is packed all the time for gas. You are waiting easily 10 minutes and almost any time of the day that you want to go get gas. It's busy. It's so busy and crowds are not really my thing. So I do tend to avoid Costco, but, but there are some things that are just cheaper to get at Costco. Now we say this with the caveat that not everything is cheaper at Costco. We like to tell you guys to make sure to check your prices because sometimes even the bulk things are less expensive other places. We've been able to do really, really well with case lot sales sometimes just at our local grocery store. We've gotten to know over the years the things that are, mm -hmm. and we love a deal. We do love a deal. And you know, we do love to make some freezer meals for y'all. <laughs> so today we are going to be making a ton of freezer meals, like so, so many, it's gonna make your head spin. As a matter of fact, if we were quadrupling each of the recipes, which is what Christy and I normally do. Mm -hmm. uh, for those of you that don't know, Christy is my neighbor two doors that way. And we get together once every three months to make enough freezer meals to last both of our families for three months. When we do that, we make four of each recipe. So we're quadrupling everything. It's really fast because you're just putting the same things in the bags. Today we are making one of each. We're making two of a few of them, mm -hmm. but mostly we're just making one of each. If we were quadrupling, this could be one of our mega sessions. Yes, it really that's could. That's how many recipes we are making. We have a lot planned for you. So a buckle up, we will get right into it. The first thing that we're going to do is we are going to do something with the chicken thighs that I bought. Now, Costco sells chicken thighs by the tray and you get a fair amount in each tray. Yeah, it's a little over two kilos, so it would be close to a five pound tray. So we are able with each tray to make two meals with that. So we split it kind of down the middle and portion it out into our freezer bags. And uh, Christy got stuck doing um, chicken, duty. chicken duty today. <laughs> So she has already trimmed all the chicken. I've trimmed all the bits off the chicken. You do want to take a look at it because sometimes they leave little bits of bone behind and gristle and stuff that you maybe want to get rid of. So before I met you, honestly, I would just dump my whole tray into whatever I was making and then deal with the bone. I, I really I'm did. I'm a little pickier. <laughs> and, and she's pickier than me. And so, and now I appreciate it. Right. That I'm eating chicken that I know that there's no little bone chickens in, but it just never bothered me before. But now, now it kind of does. You taught me something. Thank you. <laughs> so the first recipe that we're going to make, we're actually making two of these and that is Mississippi chicken because mm -hmm. we made Mississippi pot roast. We've made it actually in, I think two of our videos. And the first time we made it, the comments were full of people that were saying that you can do that with chicken. And I appreciated that so much because I've heard rave reviews of that recipe by my family and Christy, but I don't eat beef. So I have not tasted this. Yeah. And thank you to my viewers that <laughs> found a solution for me. And now we're gonna try it with the chicken. Into our freezer bags, we've got our chicken thighs, some pepperoncini peppers. I went ahead and took all the stems off of these 
And we're gonna add a quarter cup of pepperoncini pepper juice into each of those bags. Some ranch seasoning. It's one packet per. We buy our ranch in bulk, so we just measure it out by the tablespoon. A packet of au jus gravy mix. Now, you can use a chicken gravy mix, but I have been reading reviews and most people say that they prefer the beef gravy mix in this and then some butter. We're using unsalted butter here. So if you want, you could add a little bit of salt and pepper to these. Then we're going to seal these bags, get out the excess air, because when you're freezer cooking, air is the enemy. It causes your freezer burn, and we like to avoid that. Once we've got these sealed, we're gonna put them in the freezer. On the day you go to cook this, you're gonna thaw it and then you're gonna cook it up in your slow cooker or in your instant pot. And then when you're done, you're gonna shred it. You can serve it on buns or with potatoes. I can't wait. I'm really excited about this one because I know how good the beef was. Yes, and I love pepperoncini peppers, so I'm thinking I'm really gonna like this. Mm -hmm. And I'm excited to give it a try. And I'm excited that we found a version that I can Yes, yeah. so. and I'm excited that we finally finished our jar of pepperoncini peppers. <laughs> They've been hanging around for a while. I bought them like months ago for our supper club and we're in a supper club. It's awesome. You should have one. And I, I, I had these peppers for the meal that I made and I said to Charlotte, I'm like, what do I do with all of these now? I have no idea. She's like, I'll come up with something. And it has been a hit. So I'm glad that we finally had a reason to use them all and we are done with our pepper quest. <laughs> it's true, but I think we're gonna have to buy another mega jar because we've liked it so much. I know. We won't be making it again and again, especially if we like the chicken one. Maybe we'll just have to find other recipes that have the peppers in it. Uh, that is a task I can take on. That's right. This next recipe is sticky chicken. You can do it with chicken breasts, but we are doing it with chicken thighs today. We are going to add into the bag olive oil, soy sauce, peanut butter, and ketchup. We're going to squish it all around our chicken right in the bag, and that's really great because we don't have to dirty up a bowl. And then we are going to remove that excess air, seal it, and freeze it. When you go to cook this, you're gonna thaw it completely. You're going to just bake it in your oven at 350, for 35 to 55 minutes until the chicken is cooked through. And I will say that this is also a nice one to put on the barbecue. I have done that mm -hmm. before, but you don't want it to be too hot because there's a little bit of sugar in that ketchup and it can crisp up. My daughter loves this one mm -hmm. because of the peanut butter. <laughs> right? It is so good. It is so good. Okay, Christy made a really good point, which is that now, for most of our recipes, you'll see today that there are a few exceptions, but for most of our recipes, we do the mixing in the bag. When we first started doing freezer meals, we would, we had like bowl central. Like we were just yes. washing bowls all day. We were mixing everything in the bowls and then portioning them out among the four bags and made such a mess with dishes it made more work it took more time it was hard to evenly get them you know mm -hmm. <laughs> divided between the bags and we learned really quickly that it saved a ton of time to just put everything into the bags and mm -hmm. just squish olive it oil, olive oil olive oil olive oil soy sauce soy sauce soy sauce soy sauce ketchup 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 peanut butter <laughs> yes. But it was still faster, and all you did was dirty a spoon. Totally. Uh, measuring cups a little bit, but if you're using olive oil and soy sauce in every recipe, you can use the same measuring cup. You don't need a different one for each, because that's all going to mingle anyway. Unless you're one of those people that doesn't like to have your food touch on the plate. <laughs> your peas can't touch the mashed potatoes, and that's okay. There's room for you. We like you. <laughs> so we just have learned that it is so much faster, mm -hmm. and... We don't love dishes, so this saves us having to do extra dishes. So that's just a little time-saving tip for you, is just squish it all together in the bag for most recipes. And like I said, we'll show you a few exceptions later on in this video because not everything works in the bag, but mm -hmm. most do. This next recipe is a great example of something that, again, you can just mix in the bag. You'll notice that we've been doing all 
chicken thighs and there's a reason for that because that's another thing that saves you a ton of time if you're doing lots of meals all in one day is to work with the same protein all at once so we're gonna do all the raw chicken recipes mm -hmm. get that out of the way it also prevents cross-contamination so that's another great thing but truly it's just faster so this is our salsa chicken into our large freezer bag we are going to add of course we've got the chicken thighs in there already you can also do this with chicken breast if you prefer then we're going to add in a cup of salsa you can choose your favorite salsa so mild medium spicy uh it's best to do it with a chunky salsa but really whatever is your favorite is great. A little bit of brown sugar and some Dijon mustard. This is seriously just a four ingredient recipe. So, so, so fast. You're gonna squish that all around to combine it, take the excess air out of the bag, seal it and freeze it. On the day you go to cook this, you thaw it and you can cook this up in a skillet or you can cook it in the oven. Either way is super, super easy. With this one, you will have to make some sides, but it goes well with some rice or some potatoes and maybe a side salad or some vegetables. When you go to Costco and you meal plan around Costco, you need to be able to be a little bit flexible. What mm -hmm. I mean by that is we've all experienced it right where Costco's got something and it, they have it every single time you go there and this time they don't have it because Costco's like that. Costco, they're fickle. <laughs> yeah, sometimes they're like, oh, we don't carry that anymore. Sorry. And, and it's kind of true. And so you have to uh, think on the fly while you are in the aisles of Costco. And so interesting story, this time when I made my list, I had different sections on my list. I had two columns. One was for if Costco had their meatballs. The other was for if Costco did not have their meatballs because Costco has not had their meatballs in stock for a couple of months now. And we, we have checked every time we've been at Costco. My mom has checked for me when she's been at Costco. And so I was expecting that there was a really good chance they wouldn't have the meatballs. But I had this awesome meal plan idea if they had the meatballs. So I went and lo and behold, they had the meatballs. Yay. Actually, hold on. We have been asked in some of our other videos what I mean by the bag of Costco meatballs. This is what I mean by the bag of Costco meatballs. They're Kirkland. It's giant. And it's huge. And they are, you know, cooked Italian style beef meatballs. So this is what they had in stock this time. If they hadn't had meatballs, I would have had to have a plan. And so they did have meatballs. I got, I actually got two bags of meatballs because they stay in your freezer. So we're gonna use one of the bags today for several recipes, but I'll have them for next time in case mm -hmm. they have a shortage again. That's right. The other thing was that when I was getting the chicken thighs, I happened to notice the chicken breasts were on sale and I had no intention of getting chicken breasts whatsoever, but I saw they're $5 off per pack. Per tray, yeah. Yeah, so I had to get them. I mean, I didn't have to get them, but I thought, yeah, there's a lot of things we can make with chicken breasts. Always. So we are going to do at least one recipe with the chicken breasts, and that is our enchilada soup. Yes, and it is so good. And we start out with our chicken breasts in the bag. We're going to add in minced garlic, chili powder, Worcestershire sauce, hot sauce, a chopped onion, a chopped red pepper, some black beans that have been rinsed and drained, kernel corn that has not been drained because it's okay to have that one in the soup, two cups of enchilada sauce, some chicken broth, and listen, this is gonna be a big one. So the chicken broth, you have an option here. You can put it right in the meal at the time, or if you want a thinner bag, you can skip the chicken broth and just keep it in your pantry until the time that you go to use this. So we do it both depending on how many meals we're making and what we feel like that day, but just so you know, that is an option. So it calls for the chicken broth, salt and pepper to taste, 
So we're getting this all in the bag, getting it sealed up and in your freezer. Then on the day of cooking, you get this into your slow cooker, four to six hours on low, and you want to shred that chicken so that it is all nice and even and soupy and wonderful in there. And then here's the best part. When you're about 10 minutes from being done or 10 minutes from serving, you're gonna take some sour cream and some whipping cream and some cheddar cheese and you're gonna mix it right into your crock pot. And that is gonna finish off your enchilada soup. Once you have it in your bowls, you can sprinkle on some little crunched up tortilla chips and then it feels like crackers. <laughs> you know me, I like to have crackers with my soup. This is such a good one. Like it's creamy and it's hearty. And, and it's fall and it's so flavorful. Enchilada sauce is like one of my favorite things, but I really only ever have it just for enchiladas. So this is a great, this is way. A great way to use it mm -hmm. and to get that flavor. Mm -hmm. Now, one last thing about Costco chicken before we move on to another protein. And that is that at Costco, you might not be aware of this, but if you buy chicken by the case, now I don't mean a tray being a case, I mean a case full of the trays, then you can get it for a discounted price. So if you're ever doing a mega session like Christy and I do, our last one, I'll put a video right there, but we did 153 meals. So not all of those were chicken, but enough were that we could take advantage of the pricing on the case. Yes. Now, you need at least six trays to fill your case. If you have more than that, you wouldn't get the discount on those particular trays. But also pay attention to prices because when I was there last week, just kind of checking out case prices, the trays were $6 off, not $5 off. And so if you did the math, it was cheaper to buy it individually oh, okay. than it was to because get the they case were on sale. Yeah. because the sale was better than the, the regular case pricing. I did not ask if they would apply the sale to the cases. I doubt right. you would be able to double dip. Yes. But if that was allowed, then that would be great. But it was significant that you would save per tray for sure. So as I was meandering through the aisles at Costco, I happened to notice that they sold paneer. And mm -hmm. we have some really good paneer recipes, but since I didn't have the recipes with me, yes, I could have pulled up our website or our club on my phone and checked them out, but I was in a bit of a rush. And so I just off the top of my head thought, oh, Costco also sells these double packs of tikka masala sauce mm -hmm. and butter chicken sauce. And either of those would taste really, really good on the paneer. So I got the giant Costco pack of paneer and this morning when we were doing our prep, I fried it up in butter. So when you're prepping your paneer, all you're gonna do is cube it. Now I learned this morning from Christy, who's very smart about these things, that it is better to cut it with a serrated knife because I was trying to cut it like it's so thick. It was okay. The Costco block of paneer is impressive. Think of their big blocks of cheese. That's kind of the realm of how big we're talking here. And so she was struggling a bit and I'm like, you know, as, when I'm cutting cheese, I, I don't use that knife. I use a serrated knife. I bet she it's the same for paneer. And so we worked smarter, not harder today. Yeah, and actually, I was even smarter than that. She was. Because I got my husband to finish for me. And he did, no problem. He <laughs> came down and chopped up some paneer like he'd been doing it for a thousand years. So once we had that cubed, we fried that up in butter and um, just put it on paper towel to kind of blot out the butter afterwards. And so we have it ready to go for our extremely, extremely simple paneer. All we're gonna do- Tell us how simple <laughs> it is, Charlotte. You're gonna blink and you're gonna miss it, so pay attention. Is we're gonna divide this paneer among some bags. We are going to do two large bags and two of the quart size bags. And we are going to be just 
adding in some sauce, so some tikka masala into some of the bags and butter chicken into other bags. And then we're gonna seal those, of course, and get them ready to freeze. Now, the reason that we are doing quart size bags for some of these is because we love to include meals for people who are living on their own. This is a great way for them to be able to eat a lot more variety, to save money, to be able to get their meals done ahead. I sometimes give mine to my mother-in-law or my dad. Uh, we've made them for Christy's father-in-law, mm -hmm. Christy's mom. We have even made them for my son when he lived sort of in a dorm style like residence thing when he was off working in the mountains. So there's all kinds of reasons and lately we've been starting to make them for our lunches. Yes, we have. And I know that I took out white chicken enchilada and it's just a little guy and it's going to be really nice for lunch today and I'm looking forward to it. And when she got here and said, I brought my white chicken enchiladas for lunch today, I was like, Ooh, I have one of those in the freezer. So I pulled it out and I'm going to be able to have that for my lunch today too. <laughs> Isn't that so cute? <laughs> and they're so nice and like mm -hmm. individually sized. So today we're going to have a few recipes that can work for you if you're making them for lunches or if you live on your own or if there's just two of you. So this paneer is a great example. Now when you go to make this on the day of, you're just going to thaw it and cook it up in a skillet it cooks super fast because you've already seared that paneer, so you're just reheating. Now, if you want, you can add some frozen peas in there or on the side, and of course, you'd want to serve it with rice. I really like it with like a jasmine or basmati rice, but it's up to you. Sometimes it's also nice to put a little blob of Greek yogurt on it, mm -hmm. increase your protein. Um, you could do sour cream too, and then it gives it a little more creamy texture. And it's already pretty creamy and saucy, but it is nice to have that if that's what you want to do. We are moving along to our meatballs. What? Well, we went to Costco and got them. We we're going to use them up. When I was planning this shopping trip to Costco, uh, that maybe had meatballs or maybe right. didn't. <laughs> right. <laughs> I was trying, like the reason that I was thinking, ooh, Costco freezer meals and meatballs is because when we make our meatball subs, Costco is the best place to get the baguettes for that because your baguettes come in like a double pack. Mm -hmm. And so you can have your double pack of baguettes and we just portion that along so that you've split them into the subs that you're gonna need. So that is how I came to decide that we're gonna have meatballs is because of the meatball subs. They are really good. And you just put some garlic butter on there and I'm gonna let Christy tell you how we're gonna make these, but they're really good. So in our bag, we're going to put 24 meatballs and there's a reason for that and I will get to that in a minute. <laughs> we're going to add into the bag Italian seasoning, some minced garlic, some pasta sauce, or if you're in the club, you can use red sauce and that is really, really good in here. And then we're going to seal that up and set it aside after we mix it in our pretend mixing bowl that is actually a bag. Then we're going to put a cup of mozzarella cheese that's been shredded into a medium size, a quart size bag, seal that up because we're going to staple those together after. And then we have two of these lovely Costco baguettes. Now what we do here is we cut them into thirds. So in the end we have six. We're going to put the garlic butter, spread it on there, and then we can close them up, put them in a bag and freeze it just like that. So on the day of cooking, you're gonna to wanna to put your meatballs right into a slow cooker, let that get good and cooking all day, and you're going to open up your sub buns and put them under your broiler and toast them up. And then you can put four meatballs. Four meatballs are gonna fit perfectly on each of these subs and you have six of them, and that's why there's 24 meatballs in your bag. Uh, each of your subs, you can sprinkle some of your mozzarella cheese. If you want, you could return it back to the broiler and let that cheese bubble up. Or if you just can't wait, you can go ahead and dig in right then. My family is nuts over these meatball subs. They are so good, you don't even understand. <laughs> 
Now, I knew that obviously we're getting this giant bag of meatballs, so we're gonna do multiple <laughs> recipes with this, unless, of course, we were quadrupling them. Mm -hmm. And then we could make just a whole bunch of the meatball subs, which would be a great idea too. I totally would. And we've done that in the past. But for today, we're going to show you how much variety you can do with this Costco shopping trip. So what I did is I also got a lot of pasta sauce. I was able to kind of price out which ones were less expensive and I got two three packs. <laughs> So six of these pasta sauces. I'm not sure that we'll use them all today, but we're gonna make a dent in that for sure. And because we're doing another mega session coming up, whatever we don't use today, we'll be using in that. So nothing will go to waste, I can assure you. So into our large freezer bag, we're going to put some meatballs. Oh, I forgot to tell you. This is for meatball soup and I'm inventing it because I just thought it's winter, well, it's not winter. It's not winter. It's not even close, but winter Fall is coming. Fall is here-ish. Ish. The leaves are starting to turn, and it has started to cool off quite a bit. So it's a good fall soup. It would be a great winter soup. Yes. Freezer meals keep from three to six months. So there is still plenty of time to eat these if you get them in your freezer. Have we eaten freezer meals that are a year old? Yes. Do we recommend it? No. <laughs> But does it happen sometimes? Yes. yes. <laughs> and they didn't taste bad because we checked for freezer burn. And we checked for first. freezer burn. But we're not gonna put like rotten stuff in our face. For food safety purposes, we're gonna tell you three to six months. And to be honest, we are pretty good about getting through them. Yes. Because we do our mega section every three or four months, we have an opportunity to deplete our freezer stock. But and so we can stack it up again. Occasionally, a meal will fall down the back and yeah. go into like the drawer mm -hmm. at the bottom mm -hmm. and then you find it a year later yes yeah. it's happened to both of us so well, sure. you know and then those ones you definitely want to put on a plate to thaw because they probably have like a hole in their bags yes <laughs> yeah you don't things want to you learn on the counter things you learn after making freezer meals for 10 years or more Okay, yeah. so tell us about this meatball soup that okay. you're inventing pretty much on the spot. Meatball soup. We're gonna add our meatballs to our large freezer bag. and Let's say two pounds. Two pounds of meatballs? Yeah, that sounds, sounds good, right? Sounds good. Then we're going to that add- That a lot. I think yeah. one pound of meatballs. So we're gonna put about a pound of meatballs into a large freezer bag. Then we're going to add a thing of pasta sauce and some onion, minced garlic. Now we use minced garlic from the jar. You can actually buy the jar at Costco and it saves you some time. You just throw that right in there. And then we're going to add some carrots and diced zucchini. You've got really nice fall flavors and fall vegetables going on in here. Now, at this point, this that's all we're gonna do, but we're gonna make a note on the bag that the day of cooking, you could add some beef broth or water because we want that bag to be a little bit thinner. But, and then on the day of cooking, you could cook this in the slow cooker or on your stove top. You could cook it from frozen if you wanted, but I usually thaw my meals first, so. I do too. The only thing I would add to that is a bay leaf. Oh yes, if let's it's add a bay leaf. It's gotta have a bay leaf, doesn't it? Yeah. Let's I add a bay leaf and Italian seasoning. Bay leaf and an Italian seasoning. See, she's so good at this. There you go. Our a third recipe with our meatballs are simple Swedish meatballs. And these are pretty simple and they are pretty delicious. In our bag, we're gonna start out with our meatballs. We're going to add in two cans of cream of mushroom soup, some sour cream, soy sauce, parsley, nutmeg, and pepper. We're going to mix it in our mixing bowl that is also a bag and seal it up and freeze it. On the day of cooking, again, this is a nice one to do in your crock pot or you can do it in the oven covered at about 350. It's really only gonna take 20 minutes, half an hour max because they're pre-cooked meatballs and isn't that great. These you could serve with some egg noodles would be really nice. Mm -hmm. But also when I make these, I always think that I'm at Ikea. And so I always either, like I make them with the little baby potatoes. 
Yes. Yeah. And then it feels very Swedish. <laughs> Costco has these trays of buns. They're brioche buns. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if you can see this, but this is two layers. So we've got two packs. They, they make them on a big sheet. And then when they're done, they go and then they get into the package. So it's one tray of buns made into one package. So it's two dozen mm -hmm. and these, we've got so many recipes that use these and we're branching out and trying more and more because they're super handy. And one of the recipes that we're making today is a pizza sliders. And I had these in my freezer back in August. Our grandson turned one. We had his birthday party, but I was sick. Before, mm -hmm. Like leading up to, I had strep throat and I was so, so sick because I left it too long. I didn't realize that it was strep throat. So by the time I realized that I needed antibiotics for this, I was quite sick. So the day of the party, I had started the antibiotics, but I wasn't really doing a whole lot better and my energy was so low. And I was like, we are gonna have a house full of people today, what am I gonna do? And I took out a tray of these pizza buns, put them in the oven, and they were so popular. They went very quickly, but it was super easy for me. So I have like extra fond memories because it saved me. It did save you. And something about something that is already done, it was literally just putting it in the oven when you are sick, you don't want to do anything, but you also don't want to touch a whole lot of stuff. So no. this is an easy one because you know, when you are the default parent, you don't always get the day off. And so you need stuff in your freezer because you still have to make something happen so that the people in your house can eat. And this is one of the ways that you can make it the easiest. So easy. These are great for teens too. Mm -hmm. Like if you've got a group of teens at your house for a sleepover or a party or whatever, these are so, so great for teens. We also take sliders camping all the time because that's super, and I know your family does that too. Yes. But I, you know, I love having freezer meals all the time. Like I appreciate having freezer meals all the time, but I have to say that that time in August when I was sick, it really reminded me mm -hmm. of like how thankful I am to have a freezer full of food to not have to go to the store, not have to go grocery shopping, to have it all done for me. Right. I mean, yes, I did it, but still, it's done for me. It's done for you. It, when, when, it's, when it goes from here and it goes into there, it's done. And, and I didn't nice. have to think about it. And the days that I was really down and out, I could just tell my kids, well, pull out a meal and follow the cooking instructions on the label. So it was, I like, I appreciate it all the time, but I appreciated it extra. <laughs> When that is sick. true. That yeah. is true. You definitely do. So for these pizza sliders, what you're going to do is you're going to slice one of the dozen buns in half and it's almost becomes a book at that point. So you're going to put the bottom down into a foil tray and then, and then your top is your lid. So you're not going to do anything with that quite yet. You're gonna put a layer of shredded mozzarella cheese. Now, of course, since we were using that in the meatball subs and in a few other recipes that you're gonna see later today, I was able to get the Costco mozzarella shredded mm. cheese. And then you're gonna lay that on the bottom and then you're gonna do a layer of pizza sauce. Now, sometimes we've used our red sauce for this. Today, I am going to do a cheat and I'm going to use the pasta sauce. Because we have so much of it. Yeah. And it's, it's pretty close to pizza sauce. It'll do the job. And then you're gonna do a layer of pepperoni. And then if you want to, you can do another layer of mozzarella cheese so they're nice and gooey. And then you're gonna replace the top on those buns. And now here's the part that makes these like extra, extra good. You're gonna melt some butter and you're going to spread that over the top and then you're gonna sprinkle it with Italian seasoning and Parmesan cheese. I also got my Parmesan at Costco because we are using that in multiple recipes as well. And as a matter of fact, 
My Italian seasoning is originally from Costco. It is a giant container um, and we use it in so many recipes that I've had to replace it a few times over the years. So this is kind of an entirely Costco recipe, except this time when I went to Costco, they did not have pepperoni. They often have pepperoni, but this time they did not. And so I had to get it from a local grocery store instead. And I definitely prefer being able to buy it at Costco because it's less expensive. And also their slices are larger. And I they like that do better. have the big slices, which mm -hmm. is really nice. This one is new to us. We have never done Monte Cristo sliders before, but hey, why not? Why not? It's a really tried and true flavor profile. Yes. To put the ham and the turkey and the Swiss cheese together. It's, it just makes sense to put it in a slider. Doesn't it make sense to you? It totally makes sense to me. And on my Costco list, I had a note to myself that was like, if they have Swiss cheese, then get turkey because we have this great ham and cheese sliders mm -hmm. recipe. And so I thought, okay, I'm gonna get ham anyway, and I'm gonna get cheese slices, whether it's Swiss or, you know, cheddar or provolone or whatever else. Right. But they don't always have Swiss. Like we've been talking about how Costco either has things or they don't. And so I just had this note, like if they have Swiss, get that and then also get turkey because then we could make the Monte Cristo. Mm -hmm. So that's what we're doing today because they did in fact have Swiss cheese. Now, on the day that you serve this, some people like to add a sprinkling of some confectioners or icing sugar on the top. And um, oh. some people eat these with raspberry preserves or with cranberry sauce or cranberry. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Because that's how they would have a Monte Cristo sandwich mm -hmm. because it's breakfasty. It's brunchy, right? Because yes. of the egg. That is interesting. I like that. So this next recipe is Monte Cristo sliders. Uh, we're going to take the buns, cut them in half again, and this time we're actually going to do two of them. So both of our families are going to get a chance to try these out. Once it's opened up and in the pan, we're going to add in our Swiss cheese on the bottom. The next layer will be the turkey deli meat and then the ham deli meat. Then we can add more Swiss cheese on the top and we're going to close our book and put the lid back on and then have that melted butter again that we can brush on. To help prevent freezer burn, we will put on a layer of plastic wrap as well as the foil. On the day of cooking, you want to make sure you take that foil off and then remove the plastic wrap and then put your foil back on because you definitely do not want to put the plastic wrap in your oven, you will regret it. So as Charla said, you can also sprinkle a little bit of confectioner's sugar or have it with some, some raspberry jam. I think that is a really great idea. I think this is gonna be a really interesting one and my kids will probably really like them. Yeah, I think so too. Costco has these great packs of tortellini and they're a three pack and we get them all the time because we've got so many amazing recipes that you can make with them and the nice thing about it is with this type of pasta, you don't have to cook it ahead. It cooks up in the oven or the slow cooker or wherever you're cooking it. It just cooks up right in the sauce. So very nice because you don't have to drain the pasta and you know wait for the water to boil, all the things. Less dishes too. Less dishes is good. And we use tortellini a lot also because it's quite hearty. And yes. it is an, it's an easy filler. It gets your stomach full, but it's delicious while it does it. And we almost always get the cheese tortellini. Mm -hmm. You can buy chicken tortellini as well. And you can always use that as an option if that's what you prefer. But almost all of ours we make with the cheese tortellini and it's so good. Some of the meals that we're making today are going to my brother and his family. So in this first tortellini recipe, we do what we call mix-ins. So sometimes we mix in uh, sun-dried tomatoes, sometimes it's frozen peas and mushrooms, sometimes it's cooked chicken, oh, bacon. and sometimes we do bacon. Mm -hmm. My brother is allergic to pork, so we, we are don't not do bacon. doing bacon today. A little while back, we were all in the mountains, so uh, our family was there. Like I said, our son was working there. Uh, and it was his last weekend working. So our family had gone to pick him up and also spend some time in the mountains. My brother's family was there. My husband's brother's family was there. There was a lot of us. 
And one of the days we were out for this lovely little walk slash hike. You know, the beautiful like bubbling brook and like all it, I mean, it was lovely. So relaxing, so peaceful. And we're all walking along and then I get a text from our son who it was his very, very, very last day working that day. And he's like, how old is my uncle? And so I'm like, 44, why? And he said, I think he was in a bike accident. And just before our hike, we had seen my brother and talked to him and he was, the nice thing is, is that because I had talked to him right as he was going up the hill on his bike, um, or right about to, you know, get on the chairlift, cause this is downhill mountain biking. I had seen that he was like fully body armored, full, you know, full gear. And he was wearing his really, really super good helmet with the whole like face, everything. And you know, he was as safe as he could be in terms of equipment. So that made me feel a little better, but he's like, yeah, there was a bike accident and it was a 44 year old man who was biking with his son. And that of course described my brother because he was biking with his oldest son that day. And you know, your heart sinks and you're you super think, worried. How bad is it? And I know her brain, it, oh yeah, it goes up through the roof. It's, it's not just, it's not just, oh, he stubbed his toe. Oh, it's getting amputated. And I'm not yeah. saying that you're dramatic or anything, but you, <laughs> you do sometimes think the worst. I watch too much TV. She watches too much TV. Too much Dateline. But it was bad. It was bad. It was so bad. He, you know, my husband and I went up to where the, the bikers come down and he didn't come down. Um, and so we knew it was probably him. And then we found out from our son who heard over the radio where they were going to bring him down the mountain and that they were trying to sort of get things stable enough to transport him down. So we knew it was bad. And at that point I didn't want to tell his wife, my sister-in-law, because I didn't actually know. Like what if it wasn't actually him? <laughs> there is a, there is a chance totally. that it might not be him. And depending on how bad it is, you also have to gauge that a little bit because you know it's gonna be a blow. Yeah, so we knew where to wait to, to see him come down. And so my husband and I were there when we saw him like on the back of the track and my husband like put his hand on my leg and he said, that's his bike. And so then I knew like, oh, it's, you know, it's him. And he was like on a backboard and all wrapped up and on oxygen and it was totally scary. But the services he's okay. were fantastic. Oh, they the knew their stuff. Those guys on the hill, they, that team was like, they were rock stars. They just, they knew exactly what to Bike do. Bike season and ski season, you get really, really, really great at first aid. Yes, <laughs> they, know you they, do. Like, they knew what they were doing. And interestingly enough, I think they had extra staff that day because there was a Red Bull race on that weekend and so actually our one of our sons and our nephew participated in that and so um they i think they had possibly extra staff on just because they knew the potential was there my brother was ironically not in the race <laughs> but and he was just gonna do like a few runs before they went to the lake for the day so unfortunately uh his very first run down did not end so well so he is fine like he's not he's not totally fine he's in a lot of pain but he did have a punctured lung collapsed lung uh six broken ribs some other injuries so it was significant he spent a fair bit of time in the hospital he had two nights in the icu two nights out of it mm -hmm. so like it was it was a big deal <laughs> it was a big deal uh, yeah, so uh, super stressful and um, I'm so proud of my nephew because my nephew's the one who found him and, and he got help and all that. So, oh goodness, I feel emotional. <laughs> it, was, suddenly... it was big. And was so big. that is why we are making some extra meals for yes. Charlotte's brother's family today. They're going to get a whole variety because um, he needs to just rest and recover mm -hmm. and his wife has also been just amazing through this and so she needs a break too yeah so and we're glad to be able to do this and that yeah. is one of the other wonderful things about freezer meals 
even if you aren't preparing them for somebody in mind, it is just nice to have them in your freezer. I had a friend at work that got bucked off her horse and she was having, she came to work the next day and she could hardly move. And I thought, what are you doing here? And she's like, you're right, I should probably go home. And I stopped by and brought her some meals and she said, you don't have to do that. And I'm like, well, who's gonna cook if you don't? And it was, it's just nice to have them. It is just nice to have them. I mean, how many times have we said that where, you know, somebody gets a diagnosis or somebody gets sick or somebody mm -hmm. has a baby or whatever. And we just go, we call it like shopping from our freezer and literally go and grab meals. And because they have the cooking instructions on them, we just deliver them. And, you know, and sometimes it's just somebody that we've heard of through somebody else. And it's been such a blessing to be able to mm -hmm. like just it pass really that has. along. Yeah. So today we have like a very specific, you know, today is very specific, specific person in mind. Um, but like we've been saying through the video, some of these are also going to our families because we do want to try out those Monte Cristo sliders. And um, we also want to try out those um, Mississippi chicken. The Mississippi chicken. Your brother's so, going to have to miss out on that one yeah, and we'll give did. him a full report. <laughs> so our first tortellini recipe is of course the baked Alfredo tortellini. Now, when I went to Costco this time, they did not have Alfredo sauce and that was super disappointing because the Costco ones are larger than the ones that we can get in the grocery store yes. and I prefer them. I do not. Oh, okay. I like the grocery store taste better. Okay. And so it hasn't, I usually do the Costco shopping for mm -hmm. our big mega sections. And so I've known that they've been out for a while. She still puts it on my list. And so I just go to the grocery store and get it. I don't, I don't not do it, but I am secretly in my heart happy that it's not there. Cause I don't like it as much as okay. like the Classico that, I, that is my favorite brand and I prefer it. There you go. Well, this is secrets. Secrets are coming out now. Yes. <laughs> Secret. Freezer meal queens, secrets exposed. Secrets <laughs> exposed. Christy finally admits that she doesn't like the Costco Alfredo sauce to Charla today on the days of our lives. <laughs> what will Charla do with this new information? She'll do nothing because she doesn't shop for the Alfredo sauce. No, because <laughs> I did the Costco shopping yesterday, mm -hmm. but as we've established, it's I don't usually, like crowds, and I usually send Christy, and I go to our grocery store, like our local grocery store shopping, which usually there's more of it. Right. But I just appreciate so much that you do the Costco that so I'm willing to have to. That. <laughs> okay, so in our large freezer bag, we're going to add an entire pack of that Costco tortellini. And we're gonna add two jars of Alfredo sauce, and then you're gonna add your mix in. So, so today we're just gonna do some frozen peas. We're gonna add in some mozzarella cheese, and then in a bag, we're gonna add some Parmesan cheese. That'll just be a quart size bag, and we're gonna seal both the bags, and then we're gonna staple them together above the seal. That way, on the day that they go to make this, they can dump it into a casserole dish and top it with the Parmesan cheese and bake it. This is ready in 30 to 40 minutes in the oven, or if you wanna cook it from frozen, it'll take an hour to cook. So it's a nice one too, because you can cook it from frozen. This next recipe calls for some cream cheese, and I've got some other things swirling in my head that need cream cheese that we're gonna do probably later on this week. I looked at Costco because I wasn't sure if they sold cream cheese or not. And it was kind of funny because they sold a four pack and I took out my calculator and I was like taking the price of it and dividing it by four so that I could break it down and see how much they were per cream cheese pack. And I knew how much a regular cream cheese pack is at the grocery store. So I knew that it was a super good deal. And this lady came up and she's like, how much do they work out to? So I told her and then she's like, oh my goodness, that's such a good deal. <laughs> the ones at the grocery store are normally, and I'm like, I know. Anyway, so this lady ended up buying two packs and we had this whole big discussion about like, Kirkland brand cream cheese and I don't know if it's actually good. We'll have to see because this is our first mm -hmm. time using it. But 
I have now discovered that cream cheese is way more inexpensive at Costco. Yes. And don't you yeah. meet the nicest people at Costco sometimes? Totally. The day I first saw the tikka masala, I was mm -hmm. really checking it over and this lady was talking to me and we had this whole conversation and I wanted to take a picture with the tikka masala to sh send to you because I was so excited about it. And so another lady offered to take the picture. So I'm like meeting people in Costco. And if you are the lady that stuck around and talked to me, I think your name was Roxanne. And I said I would give you a shout out. And I think I did right then that day, mm -hmm. like the, our next time we filmed. So I'm just saying it again because, you know, you do meet really great. And that's how I found out that you can make the turkey club on the baguette with the provolone cheese. Mm -hmm. And that some lady told me that one. Make sure you get the provolone cheese if you buy that turkey. I'm like, okay. Yeah. And it's good. I know. People in, in Costco are totally friendly. So we have our creamy tortellini here. What's nice about this one is we can make two of them because we're only using half of the bag. In our freezer bag, we're going to add in some chopped spinach, some onion, some garlic, some diced tomatoes, some cream cheese. So this is just half of one of those blocks, which again is nice because when you double it, then you get to use up your whole block. We're going to add in our mozzarella cheese and vegetable broth. Now, if you want to, you can add the vegetable broth in now or save it and have a thinner bag if your freezer is starting to look a little full and you can add it in later on the day of cooking. We're also going to add in some Italian seasoning and salt and pepper to taste. Now, we're gonna mix these all around. In a quart size bag, we are going to take half of our tortellini package and put it in there. We're gonna staple it to the big bag of ingredients. On the day of cooking, we are going to put them in the slow cooker on low, just the regular ingredients, because I'll tell you what, if you put in the tortellini too soon, it will overcook and it will get big and fluffy. And it reminds me of dumplings, mm -hmm. like honest to goodness, like chicken and dumplings. That's what it reminds me of. It gets too big and fluffy. So really just the last 20, maybe 30 minutes max, like 10 to 20 minutes right before you serve it. Cause it does not, it's fresh pasta. It does not take long to cook at all then you can enjoy it. Now this pizza tortellini bake is not going to my brother because it's got pepperoni in it. It does and that is ham if you were not aware. <laughs> so we're gonna add our cheese tortellini into the bag and then we're going to add, you can use red sauce for this recipe if you're in the club and you wanna grab that or you can use pizza sauce or pasta sauce. So today we're gonna use pasta sauce because of course this is a Costco freezer meals video Ooh. and we bought the pasta sauce at Costco. Then we're going to add some onion, some chopped green pepper. We're going to add about a half a can of sliced black olives that's drained and some pepperoni slices. And we're going to add some of the mozzarella cheese right in here. And we're going to also put some mozzarella cheese in a quart size freezer bag. We're gonna seal those bags, you know, squish the ingredients together to combine them. We're gonna seal them and then take out the excess air, staple them together above the seal because on the day that you go to cook this, you're gonna thaw it and bake it. And then towards the end of baking, you're gonna uncover it and sprinkle that extra mozzarella cheese on the top and then bake it uncovered for another 10 minutes so that that cheese melts and gets kind of crispy. Mm -hmm. and it's a very, very kid-friendly recipe. That is kid-friendly. And pizza anything is usually pretty kid-friendly. Yes. Now, something that we need to tell you about, we've mentioned the club a couple of times because we've talked about our red sauce. If you're not familiar with Freezer Meals 101, we have a membership club. And what that does for you, it has hundreds of recipes, but what it really does for you is it allows you to make a meal plan that you can then, with the click of a button, print off your ingredients list, your prep list, and then you can be just like us, where you can have some time and do your prep, and then spend the time and do your assembly, and it's all laid out there for you. We even have printable labels, like the ones that we use, and they are right there for you, ready to be at the touch of your fingertips. There is a link below that you can check it out, and we invite you to come and join our club. It makes it so much easier when someone else has taken the work of doing the shopping list mm -hmm. for you and the prep list 
And today, before we started assembling the meals, we did all of our preps. So we diced our peppers our and onions. onions, and we fried up the paneer. We made Charla's husband yes, um, cut, the, cut paneer. the paneer. We fried up our turkey, because yes. we're going to do ground turkey recipes next. You know, so if you're doing a lot, like a lot, a lot, sometimes it's nice to break it up where you do your prep one day and then you do your assembly the next day. That kind of, if you're new at this, it saves your hips, it saves your knees. Ooh, I have to tell you about something. Oh, yes. We got this new mat that we're standing on. Yes. And it has really <laughs> saved us because we're standing for so long Why when we do our freezer We've meals. been doing this for years. We How did we not realize that we should have done this? Yeah, and so you can find that in our Amazon store and you can find the link for that in the description below. But seriously, these cushiony mats, it mm -hmm. came in a pack of two and there's a smaller one that is in front of my sink now. Yeah. So when I'm doing dishes, I can just stand on the cushiony, lovely mat and do my dishes and it doesn't hurt my feet as much. And then when we're standing here mm -hmm. assembling meals, it's obviously going to be a lot easier on our all of our joints back and all the things all the things so that is a new addition we we have done a video in the past i'll stick it right there mm -hmm. about like tools that we suggest that you have for freezer meals and we like to keep it really simple but that is one that i would add i would add if we ever had to redo that video for some reason the padded Matt is going to make it into that video. <laughs> it is definitely a great addition. It's like when we discovered the electric can opener, right? And how much what that a difference saved it made. Our, our wrists and our thumbs and, and time. time. And, yeah. Yes. Yeah. So this is a great find. Okay, when I was at Costco, this should have been it for like the meals that we were gonna make because we had our list with the meatballs and then you know the without but we had the meatballs so this should have been it but i saw that ground <laughs> turkey was on sale and we don't do a lot of ground turkey recipes no. but we're trying to do more because it is considered to be a healthier meat than mm -hmm. some and it is also fall and it feels kind of you know thanksgiving is coming you're thinking turkey and whatever yeah. So I kind of had it in my head. And it's less head. expensive than beef right now. Yes. Yes. <laughs> and ground beef. this was like extra on sale. Yeah. So it was a, it was a four pack and each pack was one pound. Mm -hmm. So we ended up with four pounds of ground turkey. And so we are going to make two recipes. Mm -hmm. We're making two of one of them and one of the other uh, because one calls for two pounds and these were not in my plan but I just couldn't resist that sale and also because in my mind I was planning for some fall freezer meals we're going to be doing in a few weeks to do a pumpkin turkey chili and so since I already had been working on that recipe I was like I have to do it I have to get the turkey so we're going to use ground turkey instead of, if you were doing it for Thanksgiving or using your turkey leftovers, you could use shredded turkey. Yeah, well, or is it, or does it call for ground turkey? It calls turkey? for ground turkey, okay. but we are going to be doing a different turkey chili recipe that's more mm. like a white chili, white chicken chili, chili, except it's turkey. And that will be with our turkey leftovers. Yes. Because this year we're going to teach you how to not have to throw any of your turkey leftovers away. Mm -hmm. So for this pumpkin turkey chili, we're actually going to make two. One we're going to put together in our large freezer bag and the other we're going to do in a bowl because we are again going to split that up and make it in our freezer meals for one so that if you're on your own or if you're looking for lunch ideas, you can use that for that. We are going to add some, of course, our ground turkey that we've already ground and prepped. Then we're gonna add some onion, green pepper, red pepper, both of those are diced. We're gonna add a little bit of jalapeno. My husband grew me some beautiful jalapenos on our deck this year, so we're using those and then some minced garlic, pepper, salt, cinnamon, cumin, 
chili powder, and some diced tomatoes, kidney beans, and then we're gonna add half a large can of pumpkin puree into each one. This is gonna be really, really good for fall and nice and hearty. So we're gonna squish that all together in the bag and of course in the bowl, we're gonna mix it in the bowl and then separate it out into the bags. Seal it, freeze it. On the day you go to cook it, you're gonna add in some vegetable broth and then you're gonna cook it up in your slow cooker or on your stovetop. That sounds really, really interesting. I've never seen a recipe like that. I think it's gonna be interesting to try it. Me too, me too. Tell us what you think down below. If you've had something similar to that, we'd like to know about it. Turkey meatloaf. Now, this one is really good and we have it in our club. Link is down below. Something that you need to know about this though, because turkey is so lean, you need to be careful that you don't overcook it. And I'll talk about that in a minute. We're gonna actually do this one in a bowl. This is a time when it's going to be easier to do it in a bowl than it will be to mix this up in a bag, poor thing. So we're gonna add our turkey into the bowl. We're going to add in olive oil, minced onion, minced garlic, some salt and pepper, some paprika, thyme, cumin, and Italian seasoning. We're also going to mix in some Worcestershire sauce, a couple of eggs, some skim milk, and some breadcrumbs. Now we want to use Italian seasoned breadcrumbs because it is going to kick up the flavor a little bit. We are going to mix these all together really well and just put them into our large freezer bag. And then in a second smaller freezer bag in the quart size, this one we can do right in the bag, we're going to add in ketchup, brown sugar, some apple cider vinegar, and some Dijon mustard. Mix it around in your bag bowl and seal it up and staple these together. On the day of cooking, you can add your turkey mixture into a loaf pan. Sometimes we like to use an eight by eight pan, or if you don't have anything like that, you can even do it on a, because it's not super greasy, you can do this on a cookie sheet and just make a loaf shaped mound on your cookie sheet and that is okay to do too if you do not have a loaf pan. It's gonna go into our oven at 375. You are going to check it at around 35 minutes. Now, Turkey, like chicken, will be fully cooked at 165, 165 degrees Fahrenheit. With a meat thermometer, I suggest that you go into the center of your meatloaf and check it. And when it's around 160, 162, you can pull it. And your meatloaf will continue to cook and that temperature will rise over the next five to 10 minutes as it sets. So it will reach 165, but you have not overcooked your turkey and it won't be dry because that is sometimes a mistake that people make. Now, if it isn't, you know, if you're still sitting around 150, 155, leave it in for five more minutes and check it again. You might need to do it a few times. I am a big believer in the use of the meat thermometer. I am a convert because I was not um, that kind of cook before, but once I learned how to use it, it has saved me. I use it all the time. So get yourself one. We have one below in the Amazon link in our store below and just start using it and get used to the idea of using it and you will really find that your cooking will improve. We have so, so, so much variety. We do. <laughs> and so many meals from this one Costco shop and I'm gonna let you in on a little secret. And that is that we actually, from this one Costco shop, have enough to do more meals. Mm -hmm. And we're gonna be doing them tomorrow, which won't be tomorrow for you. Because- We're gonna film them tomorrow. We're gonna film them tomorrow. And so our videos go up usually Wednesdays and Sundays. So it'll go up the next time that we've got a video going up, but we, the flour tortillas were on sale. So they were on my list of if there are not meatballs, get flour tortillas mm -hmm. and get some rotisserie chicken and get, you know. And so I had this plan for what to do if they didn't have the meatballs. But I ended up getting a lot of those things anyway. anyway. So we got some Ukrainian sausage, mm -hmm. we got flour tortillas, we got rotisserie chicken. 
And there's so many things. Oh, we got pasta. There's so many things we're gonna be making with those. But this video would have been hours and hours and hours if we had done those all today and we would have been like exhausted. We really would have been. And so we are going to do another video with those. And so this one Costco trip was enough for just a lot of meals. A lot of meals. So be sure to hit that little subscribe button and the notification bell so that you can find out when that video comes up and you can see what we did with all the rest of, and like mm -hmm. the rest of that sweet potato and we had gotten some squash and there's so many things. You'll see, it's gonna be amazing. Thanks so much for watching us today and uh, tell us below your favorite thing about Costco. Love it or hate it, there's something good at Costco for everybody. Happy cooking.